Vodka is the number one spirit in the world today, with thousands of international brands on the market. Some 520 million cases of vodka are enjoyed globally every year. That's nearly 200 bottles of vodka consumed every second. Vodka now accounts for nearly a quarter of all spirits sold in the world. So where did the story of vodka begin? It's widely accepted that the name vodka derives from the Slavic word for water, whether it's voda in Russian or woda in Polish. Vodka is an affectionate diminutive version of the word, which literally means little water. It's unclear which country first widely used the term, but the earliest recorded use of the word is in a Polish document dated 1405. The tradition of making vodka developed in Russia and Poland during the 14th century. It soon extended across the rest of Eastern Europe and Scandinavia. This migration of knowledge created a band of countries known as the Vodka Belt. It was among this collection of nations, including Russia, Ukraine, Belarus, the Baltic states of Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania, and Sweden, Finland and Norway, that the tradition and technology of vodka production developed over the centuries. Vodka was traditionally produced from indigenous ingredients, typically rye or wheat, and later potatoes. Today vodka is made all over the world using any number of a wide variety of ingredients, ranging from grapes to sugar beet molasses. In 2008, the European Union placed stricter controls on how vodka must be made and labelled, recognising the traditional methods of the vodka belt countries. Vodka must be made from ethyl alcohol of agricultural origin, which has been distilled to a minimum of 96% ABV. It cannot be diluted with water to an ABV below 37.5%. Any spirit made purely from cereal grains or potatoes can be simply labelled as vodka. Spirit made from any other source must state the source clearly on the label. So the first stage in vodka production is the growing of the all-important ingredients. For a small number of brands, understanding the impact of the various elements that affect the growing process, otherwise known as terroir, is a crucial factor. Terroir is a French word commonly used when describing the provenance of wine and cuisine. It can be loosely translated as a sense of place, since this incorporates all of the factors that influence the final product. These include geography, microclimate, topography, soil type, and finally, the hand of the maker. An understanding of terroir gives these particular brands an additional level of knowledge. And knowing more about how the spirit is made gives the producer greater control over the quality and the character of the vodka that's produced. Ingredients like grains and potatoes contain high levels of starch, so the next stage in the production process is to break down these complex starch molecules into simpler sugars. This is done by first milling or crushing the ingredients to break them up, and then adding water, special enzymes and heat. This process is known as mashing. The next stage is to convert the simple sugars into alcohol by adding a yeast culture to the mash. The yeast feeds on the sugars, converting them into alcohol. Heat and carbon dioxide are also produced at the same time. The type of yeast that's used is critical, as it's during this process that many of the flavours found in the finished product develop. Not all vodka producers undertake this process themselves, but it's no surprise that those who do closely guard the secret of which specific variety of yeast they use. The process normally takes 24 to 48 hours. It naturally tails off as the alcohol content rises, producing an environment in which the yeast can no longer survive. Typically, the result is a wash with an alcoholic strength of around 10% ABV. This process is known as fermentation. The fermented wash is then refined. Traditionally, this would have been done in pot stills. But virtually all vodkas are now produced in continuous column stills. This initial refining process will produce a raw spirit of between 60 and 80% ABV. The main byproducts include water and leftover mash, known as stillage. This process is known as distillation. The raw spirit then passes through a series of additional columns designed to remove specific compounds, increasing its purity. 
Different distilleries use a varying number of columns to produce a spirit in excess of 96% ABV. A very small number of brands will also include an additional pot still stage. This process is known as rectification. A significant number of brands don't control these crucial elements of the production process themselves. Instead, some purchase bulk raw spirit to rectify themselves, while others buy already rectified spirit on the open market. Water is added after rectification to reduce the alcoholic strength to bottling strength. To meet EU regulations, the bottling strength of vodka must be a minimum of 37.5%, but for premium brands, it's typically 40%. The water added can therefore account for 60% of the finished product. So how it tastes can have a significant influence on the final flavour of the vodka. Many water sources including lakes, wells and icebergs can be used in the production process. But what is key is that the water is first demineralized to give it a cleaner taste. This is typically achieved using reverse osmosis, charcoal filtering or even distillation. Many distillers believe that the less the water is processed the better. That way the mouthfeel of the final vodka will be superior. Water from ancient natural sources that haven't been touched by modern farming and industry is highly priced, since it needs only minimal treatment. This process is known as demineralization. Before the vodka can be bottled, it must be filtered to remove any remaining sediment or particles. But filtration can mean different things to different brands. Some vodka brands opt for charcoal filtration, a process that uses activated charcoal to further purify the spirit after distillation. But the activated charcoal also removes a wide range of aroma compounds from the spirit. The result is a more neutral style of vodka. The length of the filtration process, how many times the filter has been used before, and the number of filtrations that the spirit undergoes all impact on how much is removed from the vodka. Many brands prefer to retain more of the original flavours of the spirit and instead use only simple barrier filters. Using cellulose or a natural fabric mesh ensures that the final product is completely clear and free of particles, yet still full of character. This process is known as filtration. A process called rounding is adopted by some, but not all, vodka brands. Here, certain additives, such as sugar, glycerin or citric acid, are introduced with the intention of altering the mouthfeel and character of the vodka. There are many ways to make vodka, and each produces a different range of characteristics. It's all part of the beauty of this little water. Enthusiasts can select from a wonderful range of styles to enjoy responsibly. Vodkas may vary widely in taste, but all share a history of purity and universal enjoyment.